Hello, my name is Armando Bernal, and this is my creative critical reflection. The main purpose of my magazine is to provide a learning outlet for those interested in learning all sides of skateboarding, including improvement of skills and deep dives into the culture. So let us begin. My product is almost stereotypically conventional due to the demographic I'm trying to reach, which is teenage boys. Well, that's skateboard. However, through the content of my magazine, it is aimed at the most common audience. I am taking advantage and using the conventionalism of a younger male audience to open doors to new perspectives of skate culture. The main social group I'm aiming at is the very impressionable teen male audience. My magazine's main focus is to entertain and educate said teenagers on every aspect of skateboarding, both culturally and tactically. Today's generation of teens are well represented as the rise in popularity of skateboarding has risen astronomically since 2020 and most media has yet to take advantage, so my media would serve as a general guide of the sport. Now, I am a very passionate skateboarder, and so I took it upon myself to conduct brief research, and it was through my research that I, you know, I, I saw that there was a window of conventions that I could possibly follow. So, because skateboarding is predominantly male, which means that despite the influx of women joining the community, the vast majority uh, will state men. And in addition to the general public, the survey I created also demonstrates a vast majority uh, male audience. Viewing this magazine from a business approach it would be wise to appeal to the majority rather than catering to the minority for the sake of marketing and popularity. The magazine I created is directly marketed to appeal to the grander audience of young men. And aside from that, as you know, a young man myself, I knew what preferences I would have and how I could apply them to attract others like myself into reading my magazine. So I very consciously chose to stick with conventions, not just because it would be easier for me to advertise to said audience, but because of the lack of alternative audiences. So in 2020, there was estimated to be just about 8.8 .8 million skateboarders in the United States. So uh, for context, that is about the average population of New York alone in comparison to the average U.S. population of 331.9 million. That is barely 3%. And 23.9% of that 3% is female. So the market becomes very slim if I choose to market to more niche communities there's not enough money to be made. Let us continue. The groups I represent is alternative young men. So that's more of a genre, style, aesthetic, I guess. And so what alternative means basically is I choose a more traditional rebellious look for my magazine. And while traditional and rebellious sounds oxymoronic, it's more meant to mirror magazines that truly invoke the culture and spirit of skateboarding. I knew going for this look would represent the image I intended it to, which is why, for example, if you were to look at my cover images or maybe look at my table of contents, you would see very bold, dark, brooding colors uh, being the focal point of the magazine, just because I wanted to really create some sort of invigorating feeling, sort of rallying, rebellious, getting you excited, hyped up, pumped up, energetic and excited. And I really feel like that's what skateboarding is. It's a group of people that are willing to push the limits and push the boundaries 
um, and break past the societal expectations of what is what is meant to be. So colors like that, I really feel would stick out and would attract more people into the thing. Bold colors are cool. And that could open a, a more broad audience, I'd say. So my product engages with the audiences via social media. In today's digital age, it would be wise to advertise everything on social media platforms, such as TikTok or Instagram. Most advertisements aren't even incredibly obvious, and with sponsorship deals with influencers, I feel like those would be the most effective. And yeah, that would expose me to a, a, a much more broad uh, environment and clientele. So as I've stated in my answer to question one up above, uh, many teens now rush to social media to gain answers to any questions concerning new hobbies or interests as there are thousands of relatable social media figures who have already learned and experienced any given skill. So I prefer my magazine to be physically printed to reflect the vintage culture of skateboarding with a more modern style. My product would be sold preferably in stores aimed at, you know, with the teen boys that are into skateboarding, such as Zoomies or a skateboarding shoe store like Vans or Converse, or maybe a store like Tilly's that sells like the alternative style clothing, just because it has more of that grunge and relatable feeling that you would find in a skateboard store or a store with clothes that meet the uh, the aesthetic. And so uh, I, I just personally feel as if a printed magazine has a sort of aesthetic vintage novelty feel that would, uh, I guess, attract the attention of the ideal audience. Um, I've always had an interest in photography and capturing moments in time with a camera, but editing was a whole different issue, which I'd never attempted. So what I did was I used software that was available to me through my phone via Adobe Light, the editing of the photos themselves to tweak their lighting. Although I will admit that the quality didn't, did end up a bit grainy. So to be very honest, uh, I had little to no production skills when I began. I was afraid to touch anything on Canva for the risk of deleting or ruining what I'd already done. And my photos came out slightly blurry and low quality the first time around. And, uh, well, to be frank, editing was not a task for the weak of heart. And for sake of trying to salvage what I had, um, you know, I kind of jeopardized a bunch of stuff until I, I went and asked for help from friends that maybe sort of knew what they were doing and taught myself online by watching YouTube videos. So I have done vlogs uh, before in my past. I am personally an actor and I'm more of an influencer type. I do con I've made content before in the past. However, this was my first time creating and editing anything to the degree of the magazine I've made. And it took a lot of time and a lot of help from more experienced friends of mine to push through this process but by the end of it, I am confident I would be able to handle a project like this again. I've been walked through the steps of editing by peers, and I'm very lucky to have. And if they didn't show me what it really took to make a magazine cover, table of contents, and full spread, I'm sure it would not have come out as good as it did. And honestly, I'm very proud of my progress and the things I was able to accomplish. The technology I've integrated was the use of a high-quality camera, my phone, and a laptop, Firstly, regarding the camera, I knew when taking skateboarding photos, I'd need a camera with a fast shutter speed and a continuous shooting mode to capture movement accurately. So naturally, I chose a DSLR camera on wide angle and telephoto lenses. For editing purposes, I only use my phone and my laptop. Using my phone, I utilize Adobe Lightroom to tweak the saturation and brightness of the photos. I believe the only editing software I used on my laptop was Canva at the expense of my wallet due to the $15 a month subscription. Canva allows me to further mess with the photos as well as formatting the magazine with templates. With that being said, in my perspective, the limited technology I had made the project simpler made the project simpler in the sense that I avoided overcomplicating things, lest the magazine ended up looking more higher end. Thank you for your time.